Hey my friend, Arthur Morris here. Hope all is well. Uh, in this video we're going to look at the logarithmic properties uh, and differentiation. So theorem 5.2 here says that if a and b are positive numbers and n is a rational is rational, then the following properties are true. So we know that the natural log of 1 is equal to 0 and the natural log of the product of a and b is equal to the natural log of the sum of uh, natural log of a and natural log of b and the natural log of a to the nth power is equal to we can bring that exponent out in front as a, a, con a constant multiplier and that would be n times the natural log of a and the natural log of the quotient of a and b is equal to the natural log of the difference of a and the natural log of b okay uh, so those are some basic logarithmic properties that you've probably seen before so let's uh, look at a few examples using those properties. We want to expand these logarithmic expressions. So you can expand and you can condense logarithmic express expressions using those properties. So number 19 here, we have the natural log of the quotient of x and 4. So that's just using subtraction to break that up. Like so. All right, and then number 20, if I want to expand the natural log of the uh, square root of x to the fifth power, the first thing that we want to do is to rewrite that in exponential notation. So the natural log of x to the five halves. And then we can bring that exponent out in front of the natural log as a multiplier, constant multiplier. So five halves. Uh, times the natural log of x is how you would expand that one. Alrighty, number 21 here. We have the natural log of xy uh, divided by z. So let's first of all use our quotient rule and let's break up the division using our quotient rule. So that gives us the natural log of xy minus the natural log of z. And then we can simplify or expand out even more the natural log of the product of x and y by using addition. And there you go. All right. And number 25 here, we have the natural log of the square root of x minus 1 divided by x. So again, the first thing that we want to do is to rewrite this in exponential notation. So that will be raised to the 1 half power. Now we're going to use our power rule and bring this 1 half out in front. And then last, or next, we're going to use our quotient rule uh, to break up the x minus 1 divided by x. And uh, you could probably leave it like that, or you can use the distributive property to go ahead and finish it off here. like so. Okay, so that's expanding. Let's use those same properties to condense. So here we want to condense the logarithmic expressions. Uh, so now I want to bring this back into a single uh, quantity logarithm, logarithm. So here we have subtraction. So that tells me to use the quotient rule to condense this. All right, number 30, we have three natural log of x plus two times the natural log of y minus four times the natural log of z. Uh, so the first thing I want to use is my power rule to remove those numbers, those uh, constant multipliers that are out in front of the natural logs. So let's 
bring those back up as exponents. All right, and then we need to combine these two using our product rule. That should be watch per second, sorry about that. And then last but not least, let's get rid of that subtraction by using the quotient rule. We've condensed that down to a single logarithmic expression. All right, all right, all right. Let's look at another one. So number 33, we have 2 times the natural log of 3 minus 1 half times the natural log of x squared plus 1. So again, let's start off by using uh, the power rule to get rid of those numbers that are out in front. Okay, and we know that 3 squared is 9, so I'll change this on this next line next step uh, so we're going to use here the quotient rule so we can write this as a single log logarithmic expression so we have the natural log of 9 over x squared plus 1 raised to the 1 half so or the natural log of 9 over the square root of x squared plus 1 All right, so that is condensing, good review on condensing those logarithmic expressions. Now let's look at the der derivative of the natural logarithmic function. So the derivative of the nat natural logarithmic function, it says let u be a differentiable function on of x. Uh, the first one says the derivative with respect to x, with respect to x of the natural log of x is equal to one over x as long as x is greater than zero. Uh, the second one says, gives us a more general form, if we don't just have the variable x, it says that the derivative of uh, the natural log of u with respect to x, 2x is um, 1 over u times du over dx, or u prime over u, as uh, long as u is greater than 0. So, probably just as easy just to use that u prime over u. So you may want to pause the video there and write that down. Okay. So let's find the der uh, derivative of the natural log of 3x. First of all, let's let u equal 3x and if u is equal to 3x then the derivative of 3x is simply 3. Remember we use the exponent which is 1 multiplied times the outside number, which is 3. Um, and that's it. And subtract 1 from the exponent, so we don't have an x left. All right, so the derivative yeah, prime of x is, uh, of that is u prime over u. Therefore, that would give us uh, 3x. And that's, let's go ahead, 3dx there. So um, u prime 3 over uh, 3x dx. So that will give us 1 over x dx. All right number 43 we have the natural log of x squared so again uh, if we let u equal x squared then the derivative of x squared or u prime is equal to 2x dx and 
and our uh, derivative of the natural log of u is simply u prime over u so g prime of x equals uh, 2x over x squared dx and then we can simplify the x and the x squared so g prime of x is equal to 2 over x times dx so and all we're using here is the derivative d, uh, derivative of a natural log of u with respect to x is uh, 1 over u du over dx or u prime over u All right, so the natural log of 2s uh, squared plus 1, and we want to find the derivative of that. Therefore, let's let u equal 2x squared plus 1. Uh, therefore, du equals uh, 4x. And we'll stick with the u prime there. So we have 4x over 2x squared plus 1 dx, and that's it. We can't simplify that anymore. Okay, what about number 57 here? We have the natural log of uh, the square root of x plus 1 over x minus 1. Now, if you have one like that with uh, two expressions in there, uh, you probably want to expand this out using your logarithmic properties and then find your derivative from there. So let's first of all rewrite this in exponential notation. And then uh, use the exponent rule for your logarithmic properties. All right, and then use the quotient rule. And you probably could uh, use the u prime over u there, but it may be a little, a little somewhat difficult. So let's go ahead and continue to expand it out and use the quotient rule here. I think this will make it easier to find that derivative. Okay. All right, so now let's find the derivative of each one of those natural logs. So for the first one, if we let the x plus 1, if we let u equal x plus 1, then u prime or du equals um, 1 dx. Okay. And then over here, if we let u equal x minus 1, then u prime or du dx equals, um, and u prime would actually equal 1. We'll keep the dx there, and we know it'd be out to the side. All right. Okay, so let's see here. So we have y prime equals 1 half uh, times uh, u prime over u. So... 1 over x plus 1 and then minus the u prime over u over here so 1 over x minus 1 dx and y prime equals let's get a common denominator in there so let's write that as x plus 1 over x minus 1 as for our common denominator 
which means to get that common denominator I had to multiply this first fraction by x minus 1 over x minus 1 and the second fraction I had to multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1 so uh, that gives me x minus 1 times 1 which is x minus 1 minus x plus 1 all right distribute that negative to the parentheses there and now we have x minus 1 minus x minus 1 all over x plus 1 times x minus 1 okay combine the like terms so we have x minus 1 minus x minus 1 the x's cancel out negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2 and then last but not least and I've left off my dx so let's not forget that Last but not least, let's simplify the 2 and the negative 2 there. So 2 and negative 2, that will leave me with negative 1. Therefore, y prime is equal to negative 1 over x plus 1 times x minus 1. There you go. And that is it for that problem. Well, my friend, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.